Hello everyone and welcome. You must have came across different configurations of engine. For example, a single cylinder engine, inline engine, V engine, horizontal engine, etc. In all of these categories of engine, which engine you think runs smoothly and is perfectly balanced? So, for finding an engine that is perfectly balanced, runs smoothly on the basis of engine layout and number of cylinders depends upon two important parameters. Number one is engine balancing. Number two is the firing interval. In this video, we will learn about engine balancing and firing interval of four-stroke engines. On looking at an engine, we can see we have some reciprocating masses and some rotational masses. Here, piston, piston pin is the reciprocating mass and crankshaft is the rotational mass. Also, you can see the shorter end of the connecting rod is reciprocating in the same manner like the piston, so its mass can be added to the total reciprocating mass. The bigger end of the connecting rod is rotating with the crankshaft, which can be balanced with the addition of the counterweight on the opposite end of the crankshaft. But here you can see the middle part of the connecting rod is experiencing both rotational and reciprocating motion. So, for simplifying the engine balancing calculation, we generally consider a part of the connecting rod as a reciprocating mass and the other part as a rotational mass. Here we know the rotational mass is balanced with the help of the counterweight on the opposite end of the crankshaft and the major imbalance is created due to the reciprocating mass of piston. So let's calculate the forces associated with the reciprocating mass. Here this is the geometry for single cylinder engine or slider crank mechanism. By trigonometry we can write this is r cos theta and r sin theta. Similarly, this can be written as l cos phi and l sin phi. Now we can write x equals to r cos theta plus l cos phi and r sin theta equals to l sin phi. Also, we know that sin square phi plus cos square phi equals to 1. On solving equation 1, 2 and 3, we will get the following value of x. Now you can see this particular value of x can be expanded using binomial theorem. So, on expanding by binomial theorem, we will get the following value of x. By trigonometry, we know the following identities of sin square theta and sin 4 theta. So, on putting this value, we will get the following value of x. Now, for engines, the value of r by l is less than 1. So, the greater power of r by l can be ignored and we can approximate the value of x by the following equation. Now, if we differentiate this particular value with respect to time, we will get the velocity of the piston. And if we double differentiate the value of x with respect to time, we will get the acceleration. So here you can see acceleration is continuously changing with the angle of rotation of crankshaft. The reciprocating forces are due to the change in acceleration of piston, piston pin and the portion of the connecting rod. We know force equals to mass into acceleration. So the value of axial force due to reciprocating masses is given by the following equation. Now in this equation, the first term is called the primary force and the second term is called the secondary force. Both of these forces act along the cylinder axis. If we compare both of these forces, we can see the primary force varies with the crank rotation and secondary force varies with the twice the crankshaft speed. Which means the frequency of primary forces is once per revolution and the frequency of the secondary forces is twice per revolution. Also, as r by l is less than 1, the value of primary force is greater than the value of secondary forces. Now, if we plot the curve of primary and secondary forces, we will get the curve like this. In this, at theta equals to 0, the piston is at TDC, which gives the maximum value of primary and secondary forces. At theta equals to 180 degree, the piston is at BDC, which gives the maximum value of primary and secondary forces in the negative direction. Again, at theta equals to 360 degree, that is, after one complete rotation, the piston is again at TDC, which gives the maximum value of primary and secondary forces. If we add both of these forces, we will get a curve like this, which also shows that we will get the maximum value of reciprocating forces when the piston is at TDC. From this equation and this curve, we can see the acceleration of piston is continuously changing inside the cylinder and we need to balance the reciprocating or inertial forces created due to this change in acceleration. If these inertial forces are not balanced inside the engine, they will get transmitted from piston to connecting rod to crankshaft to the main bearings and to the crankcase. Now from the crankcase, they will transfer to the frame of the vehicle through engine mount. So we have to balance these forces internally within an engine using some counterweights, engine symmetry, engine layout, balancing shafts, etc. Otherwise, these forces will transfer to the frame of the vehicle and it will affect ride quality and efficiency. 
other than primary and secondary forces, firing interval also affects the smoothness of running engine. Firing interval is the time measured in degrees of crankshaft rotation between two consecutive firing or ignition of engine cylinder. We can calculate firing interval as 720 divided by number of cylinder. We take 720 because we are talking about four stroke engine which have one power stroke in two revolutions of crankshaft. Let's understand this with an example of inline three cylinder engine. Here the firing interval will be given by 720 divided by three which will give 240 degree. This means an inline three cylinder engine will fire after every 240 degree rotations of crankshaft. A single stroke of a four stroke engine takes 180 degree rotation of crankshaft. So 240 minus 180 equals to 60 degree. This means the engine is silent for the 60 degree rotation of crankshaft. This will get more clear with this interval diagram. So here you can see the first cylinder fires with 180 degree rotations of crankshaft. As the firing interval is 240 degree, the second cylinder will fire after 60 degree rotations of crankshaft. Now the third cylinder will again fire after more 60 degree rotations of crankshaft. As you can see, we have a gap of 60 degree between each power stroke of engine. That means there is no power delivery in each of these 60 degree rotation of crankshaft. This becomes a reason for the lack of smoothness of inline three cylinder engine. If we take an example of inline five cylinder engine, then firing interval will be given by 720 divided by five, which will give 144 degree. Now 144 minus 180 will give minus 36 degree. Here this negative sign tells that there is an overlap of power stroke in inline five cylinder engine. Here you can see we have an overlap of 36 degree, which means that we are continuously getting power and there is no gap between the power delivery. So this makes inline five cylinder smoother as compared to inline three cylinder engines in terms of firing interval. So primary force balancing, secondary force balancing and firing interval are the key factor for the smooth running balanced engine. Let us compare two engines. Here we have inline three cylinder and inline four cylinder engine. The crankshaft of inline three has 120 degree separation between their individual crank throws. And for inline four, we are having first and fourth crank throws separated 180 degree with the second and third crank throws. Also, we have theta equals to zero, 120 and 240 degree for inline three. And for inline four, we have theta equals to zero, 180, 180 and 360 degree. We know primary force is equals to mR omega square cos theta and secondary force equals to mR omega square into R by L into cos 2 theta. Let mR omega square equals to y1 and mR omega square R by L equals to y2. So we will get primary force equals to y1 cos theta and secondary force equals to y2 cos 2 theta. On putting the values of theta for inline 3, we will get primary force equals to y1 cos 0 plus y1 cos 120 plus y1 cos 240 this will give primary force equals to zero. Similarly, secondary force is also equals to zero. Here you can see primary forces and secondary forces both are equals to zero. So is in line three perfectly balanced? No, actually, we have to consider movement also. If we draw a line in center and take movements about it, we will notice that primary movement and secondary movement both are not equals to zero. This means in line three is unbalanced and it wobbles front to back. Now for in line four cylinder engine, Primary force is given by y1 cos 0 plus y1 cos 180 plus y1 cos 180 plus y1 cos 360. This will give primary force equals to 0. Now here you will notice that secondary forces are not equals to 0. This means that in line 4 are secondary imbalanced. Also if you take movement about this center line, you will notice that primary movement and secondary movement both are equals to 0 for in line 4 cylinder engine. Now, if you check the firing interval for in line 3, we have already discussed that there is a gap of 60 degree rotation between each power stroke, which means there is uneven power delivery and this will affect the smoothness of running engine. Now, if we calculate the firing interval for in line 4, we will get 720 divided by 4 equals to 180 degree and 180 degree minus 180 degree equals to 0. This means we are continuously getting power and there is no gap between the power stroke. So inline four is smoother compared to inline three in terms of firing interval. So this is how you can compare smoothness of different engines in terms of primary forces, secondary forces and firing interval. So this much for this video. Thanks for watching. If you find the video interesting, hit the like button. Also, you can share the video with your friends and colleagues. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring.